he's like, hey, you should get your license. And I was like, no way, gross. How did you actually get into real estate? Whether it's buying, whether it's flipping, whether it's uh, multifamily, everything that we talk about, we've done. I think I could actually do this. How is it working with your wife or how is it working with your husband in terms of roles? I think finding the right person, someone that you know has the same goals as you, has the same ambitions. Like, yes, I want to give you your keys. I want you to have a house too. But there is multiple other steps that we need to take for this to happen. Pushing people towards fixers and you guys helping with that, I think you guys can even gain more clientele doing that. What makes Home Dream you know, unique in terms of the real estate space is that with every transaction that we do, there's a portion that goes back to a charity of our client's choice. Husband and wife, of course, parents, realtors, um, I got a firefighter, investors, Jesus and Jocelyn Chavez. Hello, hi everyone. Guys. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm in the real estate and the real estate of mine. Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome to episode 10 of the Real Estate of Mind podcast. Today, I got a, a special uh, episode for you guys. It's the first time I'm having um, a couple on the show, so I want to introduce introduce you guys to the guests. Um, husband and wife, of course, parents, realtors. Um, I got a firefighter, investors, and of the home dream team, I got Jesus and Jocelyn Chavez. Hello, Hi everyone. Guys. Hi. <laughs> anyway, guys. Thanks for, for having us. Yeah, yeah of course. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Like I told you guys before, I was super excited. Yeah, we're to excited. To have you guys on because we're going to have, you know, we're going to have the couple talk and we're going to have the real estate talk. Um, we'll go through your backgrounds. And yeah, man, again, just, just super excited. So again, we'll first introduce you guys to the audience. I mean, other than your names and kind of how I introduced you guys, mm -hmm. if you guys want to talk a little bit about, um, I guess a little bit about your background, where you guys come from. Of course. Um, and yeah, go ahead. All right, yeah, so uh, like he said, my name's Jesus Chavez. Uh, born and raised in Whittier, so I've lived there uh, all of my life. Uh, father of two, so I have a seven-year-old daughter, a uh, four-year-old boy. Uh, and we're just excited to be here. So we're <laughs> super excited, you know, um, basically going to give everything to you guys in terms of knowledge, in terms of what we've been through, how we've gotten to where we're at right now. Uh, and really excited to share that story. Nice. Yeah. Like he just said, we're an open book. Okay, so, good. yeah, it's nice <laughs> because some people don't like to like share their success stories, you know. So we're like, yeah. hey, especially from like the Hispanic background, right? You don't see a lot of Hispanic investors investing and in actually making their money grow. Yeah. So that's what we're here to do today. But my name is Jesleen Chavez. Again, we share a daughter, Jade, uh, and our son, Jason. Also born and raised in Whittier, so it's funny how we met. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and wife uh, to one lucky husband, so. Nice, <laughs> nice, man. So I guess, yeah, you were just talking about how you guys met. Is there a cool story we could talk about maybe? I don't know. How, how did you guys meet? How long have you guys known each other? Yeah, so we've been with each other now for... Since 2012. Okay. So we started dating in 2012. Yeah, yeah, very 12 long time. Years. I was so 19. We were, we were younger and we ended up meeting through a friend I know. So yeah, so it's, it's actually been, been really ago. cool. Yeah, it's actually been really cool because we've gone through mm -hmm. everything with, with each other. And you're other, both you from Whittier? You guys go, you can go to high school together? No, no. We, we were raised in different parts Yeah, she went Whittier. to the, She was in the nice part of Whittier. I was in the not so nice part of Whittier. <laughs> the nice but. Part, the, Whittier has like hills that are border rolling heights that are, that are super yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. So you have Friendly Hills, which has That's Lacerna friendly. High School, which mm -hmm. is where she went to. And then I went. The better part. To the way better part. And then I ended up going to the opposite side, which is uh, South Whittier and then just Whittier yeah, High Whittier School. Whittier wasn't that nice when I, like, I, it's way nicer now. It's I gotten went, a lot better. Um, it's gotten a lot nicer. They have, like, the uptown area, which yeah. has all t types of breweries, restaurants, and stuff. So How old is that? Because really nice. I went, like, three, four years ago, went to a Spanish restaurant there with tapas and stuff like okay. that. But that's new, right? That whole yeah, area? Yeah, they, they actually have a lot of newer restaurants. Yeah, they have a lot of them. Maybe I mean, they have some on Philadelphia, Calaveras. It's, it's, it's been a while. Yeah, some on Greenleaf. They have a lot. It's actually a really cool place. Yeah, and they plan to expand and hopefully get more business owners in there, yeah. you know, but it's our little, like, date night spot. We'll go there and hang out. Uptown? Yeah. Is that yeah. yeah, Uptown? Uptown. Uptown. Yeah, I don't go there a lot, so I wouldn't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, anyway, yeah, you guys met through a friend, known each other for 12 years. So that's, I don't know, it's a long time now thinking about it. Seven year old. Time flies though. It yeah, does. it definitely does, it does. You know, and that's something that I'm sure we'll talk on, you know, as the show progresses. But I think finding the right person, someone that, you know, has the same goals as you, has the same ambitions is huge. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like a life hack, if you will, you well, know, because did it, you guys talk about real estate when you guys were, uh, yeah. Like, well, how did you guys get started in real estate? Did you guys talk about it or? Yeah. So no, I, I would say it 
honestly, we kind of stumbled on it, if you will, you know, and I think one of the first things that really got us into real estate is once we were kind of settled, if you will, once we knew, hey, we're going to move in together, all that good stuff is we're looking for a place to live. And dude, we were getting outbid left and right. We weren't able to find anything How that really suited our needs. Like, what was the this market was, like? This yeah. was like 2014, 2015. Yeah. We were still getting outbid in 14. Oh, yeah, yeah. But and, houses you know, were only priced like 450, 475. Yeah, I mean, you know, this in those in times. This is in Whittier. Whittier so, you know, those times it's like you saw people that, you know, were looking at houses that were 600,000. You're like, yeah. dude, what are you doing? You yeah. know, 600,000, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's insane to even talk about now because you're like, like dude, that was yeah. 10 years ago. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, anyways, mm-hmm. we ended up finding um, an off market deal essentially. We ended up buying it um, and then essentially did a live in flip, if you will, really without us knowing. We're right. like, hey, yeah. you know, we bought this, we got it for a good price, really knowing nothing about real estate investing. Got it for a good price. Let's fix it up while we're here. And then, you know, fast forward a few years. I think it was, what, four years that we were there? Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, we ended up selling it. And we're like, whoa, you know, it, I'm going to make how much off right. of selling this thing, you know? Um, and that's what really opened up our eyes to, to real estate investing. We're like, dude, it, it's just insane the possibilities that I mean, you have. The money that's in real estate. Yeah, just the money, you know, and you're talking to someone who, you know. We didn't come we, from a we, background. We, of real we did not, all. yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, very humbly saying we did, we, story, we did yeah. not come from money. You know what I mean? Like, it, but if it you was guys, the opposite. Um, sorry to cut you off, but no, if, you're good. if you didn't know anything about real estate, especially back then, how did you get an off market? deal yeah so it's actually funny how it works and i think it's part of what we've you know kind of incorporated into our business now like i said we're looking forever and out of out of nowhere if you will nowhere, her, yeah. her grandpa happened to be walking you know the neighborhood and ended up running into some lady that wanted a sour house because she was moving back east yeah. um and it's just so happened that she ended up like calling you know like the 1-800 we'll buy your house commercials or whatever right. so they ended up going to her house giving her an offer on her house and Super like low. I said, her grandpa, yeah. yeah, her grandpa ended up, you know, just talking to her and saying, hey, you know, they could, you know, they could offer that plus some, you know, if you'd like. Right. And basically what it was is she wanted it to go to a family as opposed to an investor, mm-hmm. which was, you know, awesome. So after some, you know, some back and forth, we ended up settling on a price. We ended up buying it. Um, and like I said, really realizing the power of one real estate and then two real estate investing. Wow, yeah. So that's yeah. a that's a good story. But that's basically your grandpa who kind of hooked it all up. Cause that's yeah. Obviously, it's it's a little random because it's so it's yeah. hard for people to. Cause people are asking me now. I know there's I have people that are looking as well, and they're like, they want an off market deal because it's of kind course. of a big word to get like a great deal. But yeah, that is random. I mean, do you know any other ways to get off market um, that maybe you can share or talk? Yeah, about? I mean, I would say as of right now, I mean, obviously a lot of people are using you know wholesalers or whatever it is. For, I know, for, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, but yeah. really a, a true off market, you're just gonna have to do the work. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to go out and either door knock, so you or earn, send flyers. You earn, you're earning your discount basically. Yeah, absolutely. Saying, Driving yeah. for dollars, reaching out. I mean, all of those things you know are huge, and uh-huh. really you could get creative. You know, I know for us, we went as far as telling our um, our mailman. Hey, oh, we're looking yeah. for off-market deals. As you're driving the neighborhood, oh, wow. as you're delivering mail, if you happen to see anything, go ahead and you know give us a call. Just write down the address, and that's all you have to do. If we find something, if we end up closing, we'll give you you know a thousand, two thousand dollars for a uh, referral fee, if you will. And he used and to dude, come he used, back with yeah. list of homes. Like oh, he's trying to get that money. No, oh, he's, trying, right. he's trying to hook up. So if you're a mailman and yeah. you want to like you know partner with us, <laughs> let us, us know. <laughs> Well, no, but you would go to these houses, so he'll give you the list, and then what? Yeah, so then we'd we'd either skip trace it back or you Try know to make reach a out call to him or whatever, and then and honestly, we we just go up there and door knock and see if they wanted to sell. You know, I think the the art of communication, the art of talking to someone, mm-hmm. is something that you don't necessarily see a whole lot of anymore. You mm-hmm. know, it's like oftentimes we're on our phones. You know, everything's email. We've kind of lost that art, if you will. So for us, you know, is we'll go up, we'll door knock, and we'll see if they have any interest in selling. You know, and there's actually been a, a couple of houses, actually one the street over from from that one that we that we uh, bought. Yeah. You know where we've looked in a, into deals, looked into houses. Not only that, but honestly, a lot of it has been uh, relationships. You know, relationships with customers. You know, we did just a monster flip here in Santa Ana, where one of her past clients was uh, was saying, "Hey, my grandpa, he wants to sell." Yeah. He wants to sell. He was, he's going to move back east somewhere. I forget no, the would, state. Yeah, he had two houses. That was a rental for him. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he goes, hey, he's going to he's gonna sell this one. 
So we're like, oh, all right, you know, we'll go ahead and look at it, you know, and sure enough, we ended up talking to the guy and he goes, hey, you know, I want to, to sell. He goes, I don't want to fix anything up. I don't have the time. I don't have the funds. I don't have the wants. Right. He goes, I, I essentially just, you know, want you to make me a, a, an honest, good offer mm -hmm. and, you know, we could go from there. So we ended up doing some back and forth. We found a, you know, a price that worked for him, that worked for us. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we ended up locking it up and 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 making a good amount of money on it and this is a flip you just finished this is a flip that we did last year yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And you're last year or like, uh, a year and a half something like that so you're getting hard money loan to buy the property yeah we ended up going through uh bueno loans natalie bueno yeah natalie oh, okay. bueno mm -hmm. if you see this what's up <laughs> uh so we ended up going through her and oh, you know nice. the, the structures in terms of how much you're out of pocket versus how did much you get the rehab funds that. too yeah we did for that one we were on the fence you know but then you know just through connections and talking to other guys that were in the in the business if you will they're like yeah. you could allocate that money for another one mm -hmm. or do something else you know what i mean but you have to build that margin because i'm sure you'd be paying interest on the rehab too yeah so. exactly so, yeah yeah because i mean a lot of people i work with they're trying to like hack the system and not get hard money loans so i'm glad you got one because they're trying to like buy conventional and maybe put 10 percent down and try to live in it while you're fixing it up but i'm glad you went like the real route so yeah. people can actually because i always i go through numbers with people yeah and i tell them i was like look if getting a hard money loan or getting or faking your way into conventional is then this isn't a deal. Like yeah. you're talking about three, oh, four percent. Hairs. Exactly, you're splitting hair. So there's not yeah. a lot of margin there. There needs to be just a bigger margin to make a deal, especially on a flip. So Absolutely. anyway, yeah, I'm glad you you went the right way. Um, but I guess to rewind a little bit, I know we talked about it briefly at the beginning, but um, but you are a firefighter, yeah. right? So um, shout out all the firefighters out there, and thank you for obviously I wish everything. I could whistle. I would whistle. Oh for you. my god. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I know you. You know. Um, you know, obviously, for, first of all, fires in California, you're probably busy, first of all. Yes. Yeah, we so. have seasons. And, you know, just like anything, we have times where we're busier than others, you know, whether it's with wildfires, whether it's structure fires, medical calls is, yeah, it's, it's, we can definitely be busy. <laughs> yeah. No. So I guess tell me a little bit about how you're able to juggle your schedule because you are literally working two full time jobs. A firefighter, again, full time job, you know, obviously it's a great job, benefits, all that good stuff. But now you're, you know, kind of your entrepreneur life. How are you able to juggle your, your life right now? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So I essentially totally separate the two, if you will. So I work a 4896 schedule, which basically equates to two days on, four days off. And that equates to like a 60 hour work week, if you will. So I put in 60 hours at the fire station and then usually 40 plus hours with real estate. And to me, I'll be honest, it's very simple. When I'm at the fire station, especially since I have a leadership role, if you will, so I serve as a captain mm -hmm. for the fire department, um, overseeing a total of four guys, I take that extremely serious, obviously, right? Not only for their safety, the safety of the residents, uh, and overall the department. So I take that extremely serious. When I'm at work, I'm 100% at work. And it's funny because guys will be like, dude, you, you know, you're always either posting stuff or your social media is like, all the guys up, at, blah, the blah, fire, blah. at the fire well, station. Both there and then in the real estate space. And obviously now you have things where you could, you know, time schedule things and have things, you know, being yeah, put yeah, out yeah. as you're working. But that time is, like I said, those 48 hours that I'm there is 100% dedicated towards the, the residents and the guys, right? We have guys that are trying to promote, take engineers tests, you know, take other tests. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I'm there for them. On the opposite side, when I'm off, that's time that I allot for, you know, first and foremost, my family uh, and then real estate, which is a passion of mine, something that I love doing, something that I've been doing for a while now. Mm -hmm. And it's fun because it breaks up the two, you know, as I have yeah. the time at the fire station and then I have the, the time uh, investing. And then when I'm investing in either, you know, investing our personal money or someone else's money, I take that obviously extremely serious as well. So I almost kind of, you know, flip a switch and say, hey, you know, my time at the fire department is over. It was awesome. The guys I work with are great. The the department in general is great, mm -hmm. um, but now it's time for, for real estate. And then on the opposite end, you know, is when my four day is up, it's, hey, you know, real estate stuff, all this is yeah. is off to the side, if you will, and now I'm gonna 100% dedicate this time. Flipping a switch time. is tough, man. It's not easy to like flip that switch, I know. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Lakers are just trying to flip a switch right now. It's, <laughs> it's not working, so they're kind of, you know, we'll see what happens with them, but uh -huh. um, well, I, you're flipping the switch. How did you flip the switch to like, okay, you're a firefighter, and then now you're, you know, what, other than the first flip you did where you guys lived in it or whatever, 
How did you actually get into real estate? I know you were working a different job as well. I think you were, I think a DA or something like that. Yeah, for yeah, the I DA? Was work, yeah, yeah. Not so, the actual DA. Yeah. Job, yeah. <laughs> so I always had a passion for speaking um, on behalf of people that don't really have a voice, right? Uh -huh. And so I got my degree in criminal justice from Cal State Fullerton, graduated in 2014, uh -huh. uh, was working for the DA's office as a victim assistance so what that is, is basically as a victim of crime and you help them with the process of kind of coping with what happened to them. Okay. So doing that, I was studying for the LSAT um, and then we ended up having our daughter Jade. I was like, there is no way I can go to law school because I wanted to go to law school. Yeah. You know, I'm like, you're gone. He was working a lot of overtime at that time. I'm like you're gone like four or five days of the week. I can't imagine having a newborn taking the Metro from Norwalk all the way to Hall of Justice, you know. Uh -huh. So I actually stood home uh, for the year with her. And I think at that time, oh my gosh, it was like, who am I? Like, yeah. you know, you have all these things that you think identify you. And now all of a sudden you're just a mom, you know? You're like, you have no one to talk to at home. It's just a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my wife's going through that now, yeah. Yeah, so. it's hard. It's hard for, I think, a woman to kind of like adjust to that because you want to be someone, right? Yeah. And then it's, it's, you know, ends up working better that you're there with the baby. But anyway, so I stood home for the year and then he started listening to Bigger Pockets. So I would mm -hmm. say that is probably the biggest... Thing that got us into investing mm -hmm. um he's like hey you should get your license and i was like no way gross like there is yeah. no way i'm getting my real estate <laughs> license those people are cheesy with their sign down the corner <laughs> yeah, like that's how i'm they know. educated and i didn't go to school for that <laughs> right, right, right. okay and so he's like just get your license like we're gonna invest one day and you'll just represent us when you know we get our property because you get mm -hmm. the commission that would help us out with the down payment closing costs so I'm like, fine, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, you know. So I studied, got a license. Um, this is after your daughter. After. Jade was already one. Oh, okay. One. So she's seven now. So she was one. Um, and I didn't really, like, know that you had to hang it with a broker. I am, like, super green. Yeah. And so I hang it with a broker. I go to the classes. And I told him, I was, like, come home from one of the meetings. I'm like, I think I could actually do this, you know? Like, I know that there's, a, like, a void um, in the industry where people actually care about their client. And, like, that's what I want to be. Mm -hmm. I want to be a voice mm -hmm. for them, you yeah. know? Yeah. So that's kind of how we got started. Um, and then we, we were still living at our first house, the one that we got for a super flipped. good deal. Yeah. 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 So we're still living there, and that's just kind of how everything unfolded. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, then how did you get your first deal? Getting your first deal is one of the toughest things it's one of the toughest things in real estate, like people think. Well, I mean, you were kind of a, you know, you, you sound like you're a real people person and right. you really want to help people, but still, people have to trust you with buying real estate. Did, so, did, did you guys do your first deal together or how did you guys get your actual first deal for a client or a customer? Yeah. So, yeah. that was, yeah, yeah. so do you guys that was me. That deal? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I do actually do. <laughs> so, I was only licensed a month. Uh huh. I was licensed a month. I was working in an open house. Okay. It was kind of slow, to be honest. I remember just like sitting on the counter, like do to do to do, like waiting for someone to come in, had them sign in, because that's what the broker tells you to do, right? Yeah. Like have them sign in, leave the number and email this and that. So I'm like, okay. I didn't really make it like a like a connection with anyone there at the open house, but I went home and I actually called the people on the list, had a conversation with them. One of them wanted to put an offer on the home. So I'm like, hey, come to the office, we'll write the offer and do all that stuff. So that one didn't get accepted, but I sold him the house, like just oh, Four houses down. That was also for sale. Oh, wow. I think it was, so that worked out. What's that? Was it Purple Bricks? Do you remember them? I do remember them, actually. They were like, they're a real estate company that's now gone, I'm pretty yes, sure. Yes, they're yeah, gone. I haven't heard of them. So they listed the property. They're, um, they're like an, they're, I think they're like, they were like an open door, I think, where they buy people cash. Or yeah. Something. I, I don't, yeah, I, I I don't so. remember their concept. I'm not going to lie. Sorry. I, I remember their name, but I don't remember how they did yeah, this. No, yeah, same. same here. But no, that was my first escrow. And I remember like, what I do? Like, I have... Did I, you have anybody to help you out or? I mean, in the office, yeah. But like, you still, as a professional, you want to know yourself. Like, okay, what I, what are the disclosures? Yeah. What's the inspection? All that stuff. No, no, and no, I for felt sure. Like, you want to know everything. I felt so new and I, I'm lucky that my office was able to guide me. But it was like, fake it till you make it sort of thing, you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, I had to do the same thing. So yeah. I, I feel you on that. But yeah, but you guys were, I think you guys are a part of a big team right now. Am I correct on that or am I? Yeah. So right now I'm with Angel and Patty. So yeah. you real estate yeah. Here. and yeah. it actually works awesome because you know for us and the way we do it is she deals with public sales if you will and more like day-to-day -day yeah. clients all that stuff and then i deal strictly with like investing both personally as uh -huh. well as for other people so people will come to us and say hey you know i have 
a quarter million dollars, half a million, whatever, and I want to invest. So then that's where I come in. And I'm, you know, like I said, the numbers guy, I'll find deals, you know, however I can. And then, you know, go from there, whether it's pitching a certain, you know, multifamily, single right. family, you know, converting ADUs, whatever. Uh, that's, you know, my bread and butter right there. So it, it works out awesome because you okay. don't really have that duplication of effort in terms of, hey, we're both real estate, aid, like public agents, if you will. Right, yeah. We yeah. obviously both have our license, all that stuff. But we were able to kind of divide and conquer, if you will. Yeah, so, so you're not in the yeah. public as much, I feel. Or, no, no. I know you do no. a bunch of the social media, but you're not. So yeah. you guys get a lead and, you know, Justine handles it first. Yeah, so honestly, I, it'll kind of depend on how it comes in, how, how we yeah. find it, if you will, or how they end up reaching out. Nowadays, a lot of what we, you know, a lot of what comes in is social media and uh, referrals, you know, mm -hmm. so we're super fortunate with that. Uh, so people will reach out, hey, I want to buy a house, I want to do this, you know. And ultimately, my big thing is, especially with Home Dream, is for it to become like a hub of just information. So if you check out our, our Instagram page, uh, you know, at Home Dream, it's essentially all types of information, right? Yeah, Whether it it's buying your first uh, house, whether it's, hey, make sure that you're pre-qualified, mm -hmm. investing, single family, multifamily, syndications, all that stuff. I'm essentially just trying to provide value and give value. Uh, so people go there and they're like, oh, this is this is cool. You know, yeah. it's, it's, hey, if I already have a house, oh, maybe I could buy an investment property or yeah. how does that look? You know, what are my funds and what's a better fit for me? You know, mm -hmm. is it just maybe passively investing and just saying, hey, I want to invest 50K or 100K? I just want a super easy, you yeah. know, X amount return or, hey, I want to be a little bit more involved, you know, which we do as well. We've partnered with friends who are like, hey, I want to do a flip. Uh, cool. You know, let's do it. Let's you do know, it. and we know obviously <laughs> the margin is not going to be as, as big, you know, but I think it's, you it's help great. Somebody out. Yeah, you help someone out and then, you know, you, you just never know. That stuff, you know, might come How'd back How'd you learn to, this stuff? Because the stuff you do, uh, especially multifamily, I mean, you mentioned the word syndication, but I don't know if you guys do that. That's really intense. Yeah, yeah. So I, I essentially, so we don't do like our own personal like syndication is we'll, we invest in some, if you will, uh, but we won't necessarily run our own. But everything that we've learned or that we've, you know, that that we uh, that we talk about, we've Learn through like bigger pockets, <laughs> self-taught, you know, and honestly, just just trial and error. Yeah, I yeah. think the big thing for us, you know, and something that we really try and preach is everything that we talk about, we've done. You know what I mean? It's That's it, good. whether it's buying, whether it's flipping, whether it's uh, multifamily whatever, you know, it's we have done it. Yeah. So, and then that's huge because people could see right through that, you know, and sometimes you're like, dude, I have this guy trying to teach me and, you know, he's never done it himself or yeah, hasn't done it at scale, you know. So everything that we've that we've done or that we teach, we've actually we've actually yeah, done ourselves, that's awesome. you know. Well, you kind of brushed on the subject already and I was I was going to ask you and then you guys were just talking about it, just kind of the separation or how is it working with your wife or how is it working with your husband in terms of roles? And you kind of did talk about the little you did talk about about that a little bit. Yeah. But, um, you know, how, how, how has it progressed? You know, if you want to just touch a little bit more on that subject, because a lot of people, including myself, have tried or want to yeah. kind of add my spouse into it. Um, have, was there a trial and error there? Did everything Was everything smooth the whole time? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think for, so I've been in the business six years. So he's okay. always been behind the scenes, right? Uh -huh. But he's never been like in it with me up until recently. Yeah. Um, so this so, is new, kind of. Yeah, so, and it's funny because I was just talking to Sergio and letting him know. I mean, Home Dream in general as a company, we've only been around for six months, if yeah. that. Oh, wow. You know what it's I mean? Really so new. we're a newer company and it's crazy just the amount that we've been able to do within this short time frame, yeah. you know, is, yeah. is huge. And obviously she's been, you know, a real estate agent for a long time. I've been investing for a long time, but having Home Dream at, as its own entity, as its own business. And that's your team. Really, that's, you know. The yeah. So that's essentially, team. you know, our, our team, if you will, and our company. So, but yeah, it's been around only six months. So dude, we're, we're new so to the space. Bump, I guess. Yeah. There hasn't been very many. No, bumps. I mean, it was a little difficult in the beginning because <laughs> I mean, just to be honest, it's like, okay, well, this is my thing, right? Like yeah. you're, you have your fire thing going on. Yeah. I have the fire, I'm not the firehouse. Like, Hey, what's up? You know, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. like, so it was it was a little bit harder like welcoming someone into like your little baby right right um but i was like okay <laughs> yeah we can do it and he, he is really like knowledgeable with numbers and like he gets all that stuff that sometimes like i don't get so i'm like okay we could really help each other out one with like educating our clients but also growing our client base of course and so i mean yeah of course there's going to be a little bit of disagreements here and there but that's marriage in general, you know? <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, I'm with you on that. But just spending 
because now you guys well the thing is the difference is you're off or you're like literally away from the house because you're a firefighter yeah. so that gives you a break from him basically yeah, for, for <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah, yeah. so they're not like together the whole time so uh, i think that kind of helps actually. yeah it yeah does. not only that but then we also have like our own clients if you will even within the the real estate yeah. business you know which like i said she deals with more public sales and then i'll be you know running numbers looking for deals all that stuff so yeah. it's not necessarily like we're working every second of the day together but i will say and and you know being completely honest and transparent i think us working together and you know spending that much time around each other if anything has made us you know stronger has as made a us yeah as as a couple you know because now you know you're constantly talking to each other you're trying to work over some of the hurdles uh, of not only the the business but then family life as well you know so yeah yeah i would say you know and obviously it's a work in progress i think it will always be but you know, setting down, you know, routines, you know, with the kids, all that stuff yeah. and setting, you know, blocking out it's time tough, for the kids. Yeah. It's extremely important for us, you know, and as you know, you know, especially with, with real estate, it's one of those things where you could always be on the clock. Like it really, if you want to, and then sometimes you kind of have to, so we'll I fill in for each other. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll fill in for each <laughs> other so when I, the time I'm with comes you. up. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, Jocelyn, actually, you're my first, technically my first female guest. So I wanted to get into... Um, just, That's just, cool. be, just being a mother, mm-hmm. um, and you know, having a full time job, and then your husband's away. Can you just, I guess, talk a little bit about that? Because a lot of women, you know, a lot of men, like you were just saying, a lot of women want to have their own identity. A lot of women want to mm-hmm. work. A lot of women want to, you know, be their own boss, boss um, a little bit. So yeah, talk a little bit about your your schedule, I guess, with the kids, especially because he's away for uh, two days. I think two days. Yeah, so. yeah, it can get a little difficult to juggle everything. Because you're juggling clients, kids, daycare, school. It's, I don't know if they yeah. do sports and all that. Yeah. yeah, so it's a lot. So And it's home because I work remotely, so I work from home. So you think that you have all this time. Like yeah. You want to volunteer in the kids' classrooms. You want to be there for them at every yeah. se- like single second. Mm. But then I realized I have clients to attend to, you know? So my morning, lo- I wake up early, which helps me to get like that... Um, that clarity Mm -hmm. so I have like me time because that's very hard to do throughout the day because I'm always giving 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 so I do that and then as soon as the kids are up I I get them situated and then I'm okay I know from like 8 30 to basically the time they get home from school that's like work time and then after that it's like their sports or tutoring all that other stuff but I can sneak work in you know and it's like he was saying when he wasn't in the business he would be I would almost feel like I would have to work around family time like oh I can't show this house because my husband's home today and I have to be home with the kids sort of thing but now that he's in it he understands more yeah so it's nice that he could actually like see the responsibilities that I'm taking on for like my clients yeah because sometimes the timing doesn't always work out you know I have to show during dinner time and this and that Mm -hmm. Um, because there's a billion real estate agents out there and they'll just take the deal so you definitely yeah well that's the thing like i'm not necessarily like worried about someone stealing my deal okay you know because i know the relationship the relationships that i build with my clients like no one can take that away because they i feel like i feel you on that right i feel you on that and if someone does choose to leave me then that's okay like it wasn't meant to be and maybe i wasn't providing as much value to them yeah so and either way i'm not like hurt (laughs) because i'm like there's gonna be others and all this um, that's but a no, good lesson though for yeah yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's huge and I think that's what's carried us a long way you know are just those relationships that she's talking about I mean dude we've been to a handful weddings, of like weddings parties. backyard parties like you know just personal stuff that they have where it's like that connection is so strong with her that we'll get invited you know and for the mm-hmm. first one I was like a wedding like who whose wedding are we going like, to are you i don't sure even know want to go person. i'm like we're going to the wedding come on yeah yeah but now i look forward to it so you she's know, like a so social much... butterfly basically. oh 100 can you tell 100%. Yeah. 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 it's she's awesome in terms of of that connection because once again it goes back to that genuine connection like people are just able to tell like hey this person's faking it versus this person's like the real deal you know and they actually oh, yeah. care about me and i think you know for her like she said working for the da's office myself working for the fire department, that translates over to real estate. And it's like, hey, I'm caring for you, but now I'm doing it in a different form, right? It's, hey, maybe now I'm not, you know, providing advanced level care, you know, medical care, if you will, but now I'm gonna take care of you in terms of finances. So that's been huge for us. Yeah. Right, and I think like for me, because I really didn't get into real estate for the money, and sometimes people do get in 
to real estate for the money, I right? I think you're absolutely right about so that. So I got into real sure. estate because I actually want to genuinely help people, and then doing it by helping them buy real estate was my way of showing my like my love and affection mm-hmm. for my client, like, hey, I can genuinely help you. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where it kind of like sets the difference between me and anyone else. Like I said, because I know once I have a connection with my client, like they're my client. That's good, actually. I could I could already just I could hear it in your voice that you you're no you're that person and that that mm-hmm. genuine and all that. Um, I guess to uh, go to a different topic a little bit, um, I met you guys on social media, um, and social media is huge these days. And, and I, I love your page, by the way. That's oh, thank you. Another thing, but if you can just describe, like, when did you, you know, when did you get into social media? What made you want to get into it? Um, yeah, if you could just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I think as I started progressing and getting more involved with, you know, real estate mm-hmm. and helping on the investing side is we decided, hey, let's make something to where people are able to you know, visit or go to and get information in terms of real estate. So that's when we created Home Dream is, is we said, hey, you know, like I said earlier, it's let's have a hub, let's have something to where people could just go visit and either ask questions, interact, more of a community type feel, if yeah. you will, as opposed yeah. to anything else. And that's when we decided to double down on both Home Dream as well as social media. So, and it's, it's been huge for us, like I said, and, and like I said, I'm fully transparent in terms of where we're at. And I think people appreciate that, you know, it's like, as I'm saying is we're newer to the scene, if you will, but we're taking off, you know, in terms of sales, in terms of, you know, uh, connections, podcasts, all that stuff. Uh, we're super appreciative for it all, but we, we realize, hey, we have, there's only, uh, there's only one way to go. And that's only up, up, baby, only know? up. Yeah, yeah I feel yeah. like we're like right here because we've been doing it for ourselves for a long time. Yeah. But yeah. as a company, I feel like we're just like right here and I know where we can be with like the vision that we have. Yeah. Um. So that's what excites us. Like, yeah. yeah. I like the combination. I like that you guys have separate roles and every client that comes in, you can kind of direct them a certain way. Hey, no, my husband or my wife would be better at this or whatever. So. I think that's a great aspect to it. Yeah. So. And then just understanding, like we were saying, that, you know, there's you're, you're only going to go up. And that's huge is that mindset, right? Having that to where you're like, hey, regardless of where you're at is I want to I want more. I want to exceed where I'm at right now. I'm looking for something bigger. And it all comes down to connection and connecting with like minded people, you know, which is something that totally. has been great so far. And that social media has provided us with is people are reaching out, wanting to con- uh, connect, whether it's masterminds, whether it's. Hey, let's just go have coffee. You know, that's been that's been huge. Just connecting ourselves with like-minded people who are already monsters in the industry right. and are still thinking that way. You know, yeah, guys yeah. that are similar age. You know, um, specifically like Robert Cedeno is a what guy up, that we've connected with. And what's up, dude? A <laughs> uh, guy that we've connected with who's very like-minded and is already who, doing who is great. Robert Cedeno. Robert Cedeno. So he's a he's a team lead of the Cedeno real estate team. So he works more like. The Ontario Chino, he does a lot of new builds. Okay. So he um, he's just really great. Like I think him and his team did like a hundred transactions last year. Yeah, killing it on social media, you know, really just insane media. in terms of the numbers. But like I said, it all goes back to connecting with like minded people and really striving for more, if you will. Right. But going know? back to social media, I remember when I just got my license and I started on my real estate page. Oh yeah. I was like, <laughs> Oh my god, two hundred people follow me? Oh. Like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and uh, I mean, I regret not using social media the way it's supposed to be used for a very long time. I would post like a picture, like a closing here and a closing there. Yeah. But I don't think until like maybe a year, a year ago, we started like yeah. vamping up. And just posting our social- more, basically. Yeah. Yeah, a year ago, if that, I would say the last six months, yeah. you know, Home Dream has kind of gone to her personal page in terms of interaction, in terms of how much she's posting to, you know, so... Yeah, and, and once again, we're still getting better at it as as we go, yeah. you know. But you guys it does... are like super transparent on it too. I saw the the home buyer consultations. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Those have been crazy so, that's so a big, far. Yeah, so I've been pushing that out a lot. School planning, because yeah. people always want the end result, but they don't know where to get started or how to or what, right? Yeah. And so that's with Home Dream, we want to educate people. Like, yes, I want to give you your keys. I want you to have a house too. But there's multiple other steps that we need to take for this to happen. Yeah. And you need to have a strong team behind you, like lender, TC, all of the things, right? Yeah. And so even with my goal planning, I'm like, I need to make sure that, one, we're a good fit for each other. Because maybe we're not a good fit. I and like maybe that, you yeah. have to, you know, go with someone else to help you buy a house or, mm-hmm. you know, whichever. Um, but it's really because you want to be, like, using your time purposely. 
with a client, like I said, that you know that you can really connect with. No, 100%. And so what's, what is the goal of, you know, what's the goal of the team? Are you guys trying to be like um, the bigger teams, like the Angel and Patty team that you guys are on? Or are you guys just want to be you two and see how big you two can get it or, you, you know? Yeah, so I think for now we're looking to set a solid foundation to build off of. Yeah. You know, we want to make sure that we're dialed in terms of what we're doing. But in the future, we definitely want to create systems, right? Hire people. Even last year, we were looking to hire, you know, an assistant and and someone that could take care of just kind Showings. of the day-to-day -day stuff, showing agents, stuff. all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> uh, but like I said, as of right now, it's just us two, obviously, just making sure that we have everything down in terms of systems, in terms of, like I mentioned, that foundation, in terms of, you know, how we're tracking uh, clients, in terms of, you know, uh, returns on investment, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Want to make sure that we have that dialed in and then scale from there i would say though like i wouldn't want a team with like 40 50 agents underneath me that's a big company or that's a big thing that's to a undertake yeah. Yeah. yeah so i would love to have like one get my broker's license eventually you know really branch off mm -hmm. and then if people like three or four people to start off with that are really like-minded and i was actually thinking about this the other day i don't know if i told you but you know how brokers take a split yeah I would love to like even minimize the split, but then have them donate to a charity. Yeah. Because I'm like, I would really love that. Knowing that, yes, you made money and that's great, but you, you also gave 10% of your check to this charity. Yeah. So I'm like, I think that would be really awesome. So there's still things I'm kind of like playing with, but I think eventually for sure we're going to branch off and yeah. get our broker's license. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there's a bunch of different companies you can go to. The, the splits are... I mean, endless. There's companies now giving like 100% supposedly, but... Yeah, yeah it's like a $500... I, I mean, what are they going to give you for... It's just... There's no reason... For me, like, because even, you know, in our business, some guys will come up to me or a girl like, oh, this this company's giving this. I was like, well, then what what do you get for that? Yeah. Like, there's nothing left. Yeah. You took it all. You are the company. So yeah. then how can the company support you when you're not contributing to the company? Oh, 100%. So... Um, so anyway, yeah, we were just talking about splits and it's, yeah, and that's another subject, but it was just kind of reminding me of that. And that's, yeah, supports a bit. I have people approaching me every day calling me, Hey, I, I do this split, this split. I'm like, I'm okay where I'm at right now. Cause yeah. I know I have the support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. I can call someone and be like, Hey, like I never come across this before. What do you think? Yeah. 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 So yeah. no, totally. Um, I want to change the subject, I guess a little bit. We were yeah. talking, we we're talking about fix and flips and stuff like that. Um, and, you, and I know you're promoting it a lot. Is that kind of the market that you're headed towards, kind of promoting fix and flips or, or, or kind of your client base? Because um, it seems to be you know a lot about it. So Yeah, I would say it's that and multifamily, you know, and I think it's understanding the two that really has taken us to where we're at right now. Not yeah. only that, but then informing the client ultimately of what they're looking at. I mean, I think we could both agree on the fact that if you're buying multifamily in California right now, you're not going to be cash flowing an insane amount, you know, you're probably buying for appreciation, you yeah, know, yeah, or, anything, or you're buying, yeah. yeah, or you're buying for where it's going to take you down the line. But I think a lot of people are starting to realize, especially now, you know, with how expensive really everything is, um, that they have to invest in something. And I always right. say that, you know, I always preach, Hey, our venue is real estate. But there are uh, tons of, uh, you know, there's tons of things to invest in and pick one that's right for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, whether it's, you know, bonds, whether it's, you know, uh, just other avenues, choose something that's going to give right. you a return on your money. But how you know? involved are you in that fix and flip? And what I mean by that is like, are you helping find the contractor? Like, okay, so look, I want to make exactly. an offer on this property. Um, it's listed at 400. Do you go over all the numbers and be like, oh no, this isn't a good deal. Yes. This is going to cost you too much or yeah. yeah. So I'll essentially run numbers and I'll look at, you know, carrying costs. I'll look at, you know, your overall expenses. And I think one thing that's helped me out is that I have a background in construction. So my dad has done, has done construction for as long as I can remember. I was 12 years old at a construction site, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, doing obviously minimal things, right? I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't building With anything. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Imagine a 12 year old walking around your house, yeah. you're like, what are you doing? So, yeah. but as time went on, I got more involved and more involved. So I've grown up at construction sites. So that has helped me tremendously, you know. So you have a rough estimate of what this could be. Oh, be. dude, I could walk yeah. in, and she knows I could walk I into a house them, right yeah. now and be like, okay, you're going to spend X amount for cabinets, your countertops are going to be this much, your flooring is going to be this much. If you buy it yourself, this is how much it's going to cost you per linear foot for installation. This is how much it's going to cost you for 
uh, you know, insulation of your countertops, yeah. you know, all that stuff. So that's that's been nice because I've been able to keep up on that and mentally take note of how. But labor's um, got so expensive. That's another it's gotten problem. It's crazy expensive. With, um, yeah. Because I've been looking at flips too, and just labor is just killing me when I'm going over the numbers. I actually haven't made doing the actual flip has been one of my one of my goals. Yeah. I did buy one um, out of state. I didn't flip it, but it needed to be flipped, so I just kept it long term. Yeah. But the labor costs, by the way, unfortunately, sorry for the people in California, they're just higher here, and I think I think we just have to pay people more. I don't know. But are you? Keeping up with those costs? Are you factoring them in, obviously? Yeah, 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 they have to be factored in. Not only that, but then with the time that I've been doing it, I now have people that I go to. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, you need that team. Yeah. yeah, so best case scenario, I mean, this would be in a perfect world, is you have a contractor that doubles as mm -hmm. you know someone that's overseeing the project. project so a project manager. manager, right? Is you have someone like that, but like that's you not, said, the that's cost. That's not you. You're not the project manager. So, so what you know, what I was gonna say is okay. that that is awesome, and that'd be best case scenario. But that's probably not happening here for a decent price. Yeah, you know it's what expensive. I mean? Right. Yeah, and at yeah. the end of the day, it's you know I don't see it as a negative. Ultimately, you know, if these people are doing work, they have to be properly compensated, and I get it. But from a flipping standpoint, it sometimes right. doesn't make sense. So what I do now is basically subcontract everything out and mm -hmm. then essentially serve as a project manager. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it does take a little bit more time, obviously, probably more than I would like. But that's <laughs> but that's the that's, name of the game. You know what I mean? Process, and then yeah. you figure out. We enjoy it, though. Like, yeah, I enjoy actually it. really like being like in. I've seen flips where like the owners never even been in the house. Like you don't even know what's going on. What kind of floors are in there? Like nothing. The, the new owner or the old owner? No, my, like the new like say I'm, oh, I'm an investor, right? And yeah, I'm just yeah. like, oh, AG, G, uh, my general contractor, take care of it, right? But yeah. I've never stepped foot into that house. Yeah, yeah. You don't know the quality of work that's being done in that home. Uh huh. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen like them trying to flip it and sell it. I'm like, have you ever been in the house? Have you seen like the floors are weird and this and that? Yeah. So we really pride ourselves in the quality of work that we do. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's why we actually kind of like benefit from him, both of us being there because we know exactly if we have to keep an eye on. You have different eyes too. So. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I mean, you're saving what 15, 20% off the top by not having yeah. that general contractor, by not having someone run, uh, you know, as a project manager. And like she said, honestly, like we do take pride in the flips that we do, you know, and we always say it. Every flip that we do, we do it as if we were moving into, mm -hmm. you know, it's a little bit more pricey, sure. Right. But at the end of the day, this is going to a family that's been saving for this house right. for a long time. You know, like I want to make sure that, you know, not only for themselves, but for myself, that I'm able to go to sleep that night knowing like, OK, we did it. Right. They're solid. You know, they're not dealing with some you know, plumbing or some electrical issue that's going to be a hazard in the future. And that's that's been huge for us. Yeah. You know, and there's been plenty of times where, you know, uh, some some projects, you know, I'll, I'll call the general contractor or whoever's working on it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, this isn't gonna fly. This needs to be redone. Oh and yeah. Let's, yeah. So well, have you ever had to like cancel a flip like halfway, and you're like, oh no, this isn't gonna. This is. I haven't had to, to be negative on this. I haven't had to cancel a flip, but I've had to definitely call people back and be like, dude, this is gonna get fixed, you know. Yeah. And there's been other ones where it's like guys will go, and then the, I think they'll realize like, man, their their expectation level is like very high, you know. They're not just looking for someone to put lipstick on a pig. Like they want this thing nice and some like they won't come back, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that's fine. Like I don't want those people. Not only that, but Bye. then I have certain rules that I go by in terms yeah. of hiring. So now, you know, the more you do it, once again, you get better at systems and kind of vetting people out that are, right. you know, good for the business or not good for the business. Uh, and now it's certain things like even little things right if i call a contractor if, if they don't answer all good i'll leave a message if they don't call me back i will never call them back again but they do yeah. a lot the contractors i always tell people this it's one of the worst customer service yeah yeah it, seen, and it makes sense so. you know you figure i guess they're out on sense. the job and yeah all that. yeah they're well they're a lot more like hands-on they're probably yeah. rougher in terms of like business is probably not the first thing on their mind it's doing Right. It's not necessarily yeah. the, the processes, all that stuff. So it, it makes sense. But yeah, hiring sometimes can be tough. That's why when you do find someone is, hey, keep you them. take care of them, you keep them, you know what I mean? And you, you keep them on your hip as much as you can because you know that the payout is going to be even greater because of the work that they're doing mm -hmm. and they're showing up. They're, they're, they're doing what they're supposed yeah. to. But kind yeah. of going back to your original question, like why we pushed Fixer so much is because we know the benefit from it. Right. Like we've seen firsthand, like, okay, I understand it's going to take a little bit of elbow grease and maybe $50,000, but 
the time that your property appreciates is going to be so much shorter than if you were to buy something already fixed, paying top dollar for it. Yes, you're going to get appreciation, but very like slowly over the years, you yeah. know? So I tell my clients, if you're looking to pull out money out of your equity to reinvest into something, it's better if you get a fixer. Fix it up at a little at a time, and then that way you have the money available to you sooner rather than later. No, 100%. But another thing is you were talking about that we have an affordability issue here. Right. So I think even pushing people towards fixers and you guys helping with that, I think you guys can even gain more clientele doing that. Especially because you're kind of, it sounds like you're kind of walking them through the whole steps. Oh, for sure. And again, homes here are, they're tough. So instead of getting a home for 900 we can get it maybe for early sevens or something like that where it's kind of more affordable i don't know these numbers are like seven hundred thousand for a starter homes a lot but then fortunately oh that's, that's what it is fortunately yeah, that's, that's like easily where it's at and that's a fixer so like they're like 900 usually like a three bedroom two bath that's like nice is roughly 900 grand yeah in our area. And, and i think a lot of it too, well like she was saying is sometimes people are scared of fixer uppers because they don't necessarily understand but it is a lot of work though yeah it well is. it is a lot of work and just like anything, if you don't know the systems and how to do it, once again, it is a lot of work. But if you have someone walking you through it, which you know we pride ourselves on, it's like, hey, I don't gatekeep anything. I'll give you all and my but connections. A, but a home is like a present. They're like, oh my god, I want to move in. No, nah, it's gonna be so you make people. You, it's gonna be at least six months. And that's you exactly, can't move in. This isn't Christmas, man. You gotta wait. Like, yeah, and that's exactly what I was what I was getting to. Yeah. Is that's why I think flips are, are huge. Is because a lot of people are like, man, I don't have the desire. I don't have you know the money. I I don't yeah. know how to do it. That's why I want to pay that luxury tax. I want to pay the luxury tax and move into something that's already flipped. That's why I don't think flips here in Southern California are going anywhere. You know what I mean? And and obviously the numbers, that's a whole other story, getting the flip. But a finished product is, is huge here in California. And, you know, we've seen where, I don't want to say it doesn't matter where it's at, but, you know, some of these houses, they look yeah. beautiful. And then so, there's people that you wouldn't think are, are showing up for the open house. And you're like, man, this person... You know, they want to live here and yeah. not that it's a terrible area, but it's not, it's not necessarily, you know, what you would think. So, yeah. So the market's still hot. I know you're just talking about that, that people are living in random spots. You wouldn't think how's the market in Whittier basically where you guys, Oh, Whittier I mean, is always hot. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I want to say we only have like 70 active listings right now in Whittier. Um, and Whittier is a spot where it's, I feel like it's pretty affordable mm -hmm. and there's a lot relatively of relatively affordable. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of California, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, and I, the thing is I was born and raised there. So yeah. I know what you're like the back of my hand. So I could be like, don't go there, come here, go there. This is yeah. your starter home, you know? And I think that's what people need to realize is that, yes, you're not going to have your four bedroom, two bathroom, like right off the bat. Right. Get your two, one, get a three, two, mm -hmm. fix it up, stay there for a little bit. And then let's roll over your money. Yeah. But people sometimes have a hard time thinking long term. Um, and that's what I really want home dream to be like, educate people. It's like, hey, like, just make a little bit. It's not even a sacrifice. Make an investment for your future, for your children. Stay here for a little mm -hmm. bit, and then let's do it all over again. And that's how you're really going to increase long your to Getting your people wealth. to think long term, um, that's part of what this podcast is even about, about, you know, about real estate and getting people to think more entrepreneurial. But it's a tough thing, and I know we're preaching it, but, yeah, you're absolutely right that real estate is 100%, 100% long term. Mm -hmm. um, and in, like I said, since real estate is long term, I know that unfortunately, like these single family homes, when we're looking, I know you're looking at a lot of investors, they don't cash flow. They yeah. don't even come near cash flowing, yeah. especially like that 900,000. We just fixed it up. Let's just say the $900,000 house, it's going to rent for maybe early 4,000s, maybe. Like let's just say four grand, even 4,500. And that payment now is between, you know, six and 7,000, unless I'm putting down. Like big amount, a yeah. crazy amount down, which is like really hard to find. So when you're working with investors, Jesus, are we pushing more towards like as multifamily? I could break even on a multifamily a lot easier. Um, so are you kind of pushing your investors more towards that type of product just so we don't have to come out of pocket? Yeah, so that's a good question. So I, I think it depends on the individual. You know what I mean? I, I think a lot of what we do is we reverse engineer is yeah. we'll look backwards and be like, hey, where do you want to be in five, 10 years? And like I said, work backwards from there. You know, so the advice that I give someone who might be younger might not necessarily be the same as someone that's older. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll give you examples, right? Is, is some of the guys I work with are younger guys. They don't have kids. They don't have 
um, you know, really anyone that's going to live with them is they're solo and they're okay with maybe renting out rooms. Well, you know, like one of the guys that we have within our department right now, we ended up saying, hey, yeah. you know, if you're okay with having roommates is you can set yourself up for life if you buy this house and rent out the other three rooms. You know what I mean? That way your out of pocket is going to be minimal and it's all compounding, right? Yeah. Is now you're going to be able to save X amount for the next house and keep it going and do as many as these as you can before a certain age, yeah. right? Versus someone who might be older with kids, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful, right? Is, hey, you might, you might have to buy something and especially here in Southern California, is you're gonna have to think outside the box. Yeah. Is, hey, what can I do with that garage? Can that be converted mm -hmm. into something? You know, does it have an additional maybe mother-in-law suite in the yeah. back? Can that be something? You know, it's just, it is what it is. We don't have nearly the amount of inventory that exactly. we, we should have here in Southern California. So housing is always gonna be an issue, you know? Uh, but some of these, some of these houses, you know, for some, uh, some clients is they're renting out the primary, like I said, converting the garage and then even converting, you know, a room in the back. And some of these things are cash flowing like crazy. You know what I mean? Depending on what, you know, your, your payment you is, how long you've had yeah. it, all of that stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, honestly, it's just going to depend on, you know, the person, the money, how they, yeah. how they have the money, whether it's, Hey, I've been saving up X amount for X amount of years. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is coming from a HELOC. Hey, this is coming from a private investor. I'm returning it back at a whatever, 5% rate versus a 9% rate for a HELOC. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and like she said, ultimately sitting down with them and saying, hey, this is what's best going to benefit you. Yeah, you know I've been, I, we've been looking into like more of the ADU conversions. We love multifamily. Yeah. But sometimes the rents are so low. And then you have to, it's not, unless it comes vacant, then you can, you know, increase rents to market, right? Right. But then if not, you can only increase it. I think this past year, we could only increase 8.6%. Depending on the area. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it just really depends like how that multifamily is performing. Yeah. Multifamilies. Yeah, you're right. They rent for like next to nothing. I'm working a property in Santa Monica right now. It is listed for $2 million. It's a four unit. The middle unit, I believe it's a two bedroom, one bath, and they're renting it for like 1100 bucks. So, in Santa and, Monica? And, wow. and in Santa Monica, this is on, um, for those of you guys who know Santa Monica, it's on 19th. But so it's probably a mile and a half from the pier or something like that, maybe yeah. two miles. So, my whole point was that multifamily is just the rents are super cheap but then these but again these landlords they're kind of like slum lords because they're not really yeah. fixing it up but i'm not going to fix it up if if i can't raise the rent and this thing is super like negative all the time i'm not going to spend you know 40 grand or 30 grand renovating the whole unit so again it's there's a drawback in that too but yeah um, and, and then I, I think a lot of it too and getting back to that communication you know with the properties that we've had is having that communication with the tenants you know is at the end of the day i'll be honest a lot of them realize hey this is a business you know this is a yeah. business you know housing is is it's not free you know it's like <laughs> right. hey, you're gonna have to pay x amount yeah and and they realize that you know so whether it's through people moving out right where you could eventually you know renovate and then rent it at market value you know whether it's people just hey this is your rent right now i'm gonna have to raise it x amount over the next few years to reach um uh, just market value market rent you know right. and if they're good with it cool you know if that doesn't work with them then if they want to move out that's fine too yeah. but it's having that communication of like hey this is what's what's going to happen you know yeah, but you tailor make your 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 presentation i guess to each client depending on their, their situation yeah like usually when saying. we buy something you know multifamily is we'll go up to every unit and we'll introduce ourselves and say hey we're the new owners, you know, it, this is the plan, you know, first and foremost, like, obviously, nice to meet you. Oh, you want to you keep know? them comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. And that's like you mentioned, at the end of the day, you, so you do have, you know, slumlords and, you know, people that are asking to get things fixed and, you know, no or put no money into the property is like, yeah. dude, that's not how it should be. You know, it's like if you are providing housing for someone is you want to make sure that it's Safe. It's safe that it's, you know, meeting their needs because it's a two way thing, you know, and we have you we have tenants where we have constant communication with and it's sometimes it might just be, hey, you know, checking up on you. Is there anything that you that you need? You know, is there anything that, that we could help out with? And oh, new floors. 99. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. always a yes. I know. Yeah. So I mean, I need to tell you 99.9% <laughs> uh, of the time it's hey I'm good, you know, and then if they need something, we'll get on it. You know, we give ourselves usually 24 hours to address whatever it is that they're asking for so yeah. if it's hey this is broken or this has happened you know we'll at least respond within 24 hours and then go from there so and that's obviously a whole another thing right is 
having someone manage your, your properties versus you managing yourself. Like I said, it's a whole other thing, but we do have a, a pretty good beat on what's going on. Yeah. So you guys, whole... where you guys are managing these properties? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So we're managing. This is your own portfolio or clients? This is our own portfolio. It's our own portfolio. Oh, okay. Yeah, clients. I mean, well, you they, guys. They, this they is can... what you guys do now for a living. So it's it's way easier for clients. I guess it's. Yeah, it's, and we have yeah. a contact. Like, if someone needed a property manager, I actually just gave uh, our our. She's not our personal, but I know her uh-huh. to another client, and that she was able to find a tenant right away. Oh, okay. But kind of going back to like the cash flow. Thing is yeah. It's really hard to cash flow, right? It is. So what I'm looking for in properties for clients or even for ourselves, because we want to buy at least like two more homes this year, mm-hmm. is, okay, how do I make this one house into three homes, right? Right. Yes, you have the front portion of the house. Is there a way I can maybe extend the back, mm-hmm. um, convert the garage? So at least maybe we can break even. And then as rents increase, that's how you're going to start cash flowing over time. Right. Right, so that's no, kind of, of where my focus is. You have to get really creative when it comes to... Are you, you, have you guys ever gone down that path in terms of ADU? Have you ever tried to do an ADU or no, not yet? So, no, not not yet. I feel like this year we're probably going to have to just because the multifamilies are a little harder to come by. That yeah. actually makes sense. Yeah. But we know the value of homes in general. So we're probably going to... There's do, people do that specialize conversion. in ADUs, yeah, but yeah. they're so expensive, I've heard. Uh, so, yeah, I know it's not... You know your your main expertise, but yeah, I'd love to get somebody on that specializes yeah. in ADUs. Because anyway, know, uh, we have a contact or a few contacts. Yeah, because it's it's because I look at it and I'm going it over with clients and like they're telling me, oh, it's a hundred and fifty thousand, but it'll only bring like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars. I was like, dude, take that hundred fifty grand and go dump it into another property. Yeah. Don't forget about the ADU because it yeah. doesn't make sense. It's too it's too expensive. Oh yeah. No, 100%. So, um, yeah, I'd love to talk to somebody how. To Depends on figure out how it makes sense. Yeah, the right. numbers have to make sense, and really, it'd have to be for some. I mean, yeah, it would have to be a certain situation, really. I don't think that you'd be able to buy something and right off the bat be like, "Hey, I'm going to build an ADU." If it's from the for my up. mother, mother-in-law, or if it's for like a family member, okay. But if it's, um, we're talking pure investment. Yeah, so. I think more conversions. Conversions be, are way easier, be, way cheaper. cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would oh. start there, yeah. and then if you want to do a junior ADU that costs one fifty, yeah, then at that point, do it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then just like anything, it's going to come down to the numbers and saying, hey, I'm paying this much. It's going to take whatever, five, ten years to break even, and then I'm going to start cash flowing. Because that's another thing people have to remember is when you're investing, you are you are investing money for a greater return down the line, right? I think sometimes you see flip or flop, or you might see these shows and be like, oh, dude, these people are making yeah. They're making a lot of grand, money. Every, I'm watching them. They're making a ton. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and one, it's for TV. And then two, it's some of these numbers, you know, might be off a little bit, although I think they're getting better at like actually showing you the carrying costs and everything else. Anyways, you yeah. know, it, it, real estate is a long-term game. And I think if you realize that, I always preach it, like real estate should be boring. You know what I mean? Like you should put your money into it and know, hey, in X amount of years, yeah. I'm going to get, you know, a return, you know, right. and it's, and it's going to make sense, you know? And, and really when you do the math, it breaks down like crazy, right? Is you're going to have appreciation. If you have something that you're renting out, it's going to be the loan pay down, yeah, pay right? All change. that stuff is, is, is going to come into play when, mm-hmm. when the time is right. And you'd be surprised what ADUs run for. A two bedroom ADU, probably like 21 to 23. That's a lot. Well, but it would be brand new though. So that's that's my, that's my your selling pitch, I guess. It's a brand new spot. Yeah. Like literally new construction. So yeah, so. So, yeah I, um, I know we were just talking about multifamily and um, I know you have and, and about tenants and things like that. And I know you guys have some eviction story. Oh, so yeah. If, if we could get, I guess, I don't know. I, I literally know nothing about <laughs> it. You just told me that there was an eviction story that you, that, I'll let um, you tell it. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> You tell it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just kind of bringing awareness to, you know, one, the story, and then really trying to help out someone that might be in the multifamily business and some red flags that they could look out for. So, okay. uh, I want to say it was what, 2021, right? So, it was during mm-hmm. COVID times. And this is long story short, is we ended up inheriting, we ended up buying a multifamily. It was a triplex in Whittier. We ended up inheriting, you know, obviously the tenants, tenants and yeah. the, the one in the front, um, Essentially, his dad lived there and ended up moving to Texas. Left him. Well, we were we were brand new. Yeah. You know, we're brand new to multifamily real estate, kind of in general. You know, um, but we ended up saying, "Hey, okay," introducing ourselves, all that stuff. You know, and basically left him in place. He was paying every month. Well, you could probably see a couple of red flags already, right? No new lease agreement was written. You know what I mean? Like that he was he was inherited. He was there. You know, kind of it was causing yeah. you know rent some issues so low. rent was super low so red flags that now you know we would be able to see right away so you bought this 
We bought the the triplex. The triplex. Yes. This is this, this you, is after your purchase. You're dealing with this, or this is during escrow. No, this is after the purchase. Yeah. So, so you didn't see any of this in escrow. So That's we <laughs> so we basically got rent rolls. Obviously, we got all that stuff, yeah, yeah, but we yeah. didn't necessarily dig into like, hey, is that the actual person that's living there? So you know the, what I this mean? This is a learning moment. Basically. Oh, 100 yeah, 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 yeah. This is a learning moment. And, um, and of course, when you meet the tenants, they're putting their their best game face on too. Oh, you yeah, know? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So then, as time as time progressed, it was one of those things where he was, you know, late on rent, late on this, late on that. And like I said, we're we're good about like, hey, things happen. I get it, you know, and that's fine. But when it's repeated, right, that's another red flag. It's hey, what's what's going on here? You know, something is something happening. Anyways, fast forward to to COVID times. You know, COVID came along, and as we know, restrictions in terms of you know who you could. You're not uh, allowed to kick anybody out. Everybody, everybody yeah. can live for free. Okay. Everybody's all good. Pay rent. <laughs> Everything okay. was locked down, and then sure enough, that's when he stopped basically paying for months and months and, and I months. I knew it as soon as they Started announced it on the oh, TV. 100%. I was yeah. like, so and so is gonna let us know that he lost his job and that he's not gonna be able to pay rent. Right. Yeah, like yeah. five days later, what do you know? You got the text. Yeah, we got the text. I was and like, this, I knew it. And this went on for not paying rent for how many months? He owed us fifteen thousand dollars in rent, which is like a year, probably a year. Yeah, yeah, so yeah that's about right. it. Was a fifteen thousand something, you know? And so it, once again, we had our hands tied. There was nothing we could do. We have our legal team that we go through in terms. But the of, government was allowing this. We so tried to oh, evict him. Yeah. yeah. We went through the whole like eviction process. No, it's COVID. You can't evict anybody. They can live for free. Yeah. And we're well, they sorry went. About they that. went to court, and then he ended up showing up in court with the lawyer. And for so what? then our lawyers are like, "Oh, our hands are tied. Like he's claiming this, isn't this?" So I'm like, "Okay, well, what can we do?" What is he claiming? Yeah. You know? I lost my job. Thankfully, Everybody lost their job. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. And like I said, dude, I get it. You know, and I've I've seen firsthand like it, someone's in need, right? Growing up, whatever, you know, wherever I grew up, environment, all that stuff is like people fall into hard times. But then there's that, and then there's taking advantage Manager, of yeah. the system, you know. So that's what ended up happening. Anyways, we ended up basically having to do um, not necessarily cash for keys, but saying, "Hey, we will forgive basically the fifteen thousand dollars if you move out by this just date." Just get the hell out. Just, just yeah, just get out. So, uh, sure enough, after some back and you. forth, yeah, he ended up agreeing, and this is where it kind of gets crazy because. It was one of those things where like, hey, we'll be there this day to pick up keys. It was a movie. You know? Yeah, it was yeah, it was like a movie. So we'll be this day to pick up keys, you know, and he's like, Okay, perfect, you know, I'll see you in whatever, three, four days. Right. So then the day of gets there and, and I shoot him a text, you know, hey, you know, I'm on the oh, way, I'll yeah, see you in a little bit, you yeah, know, or just kinda of leading up to crickets, nothing, right? So yeah, absolutely. So nothing, you know, and then I go, all right, that's interesting. It gets even closer. So hey, you know, we're, we're 15 minutes out, you know, I don't want to just, you know, you know, just pop in on them. So hey, we're, we're 15 minutes out, whatever. Anyways, doesn't text back. He ended up leaving the keys, I want to say like right on the door. 100% just grabbed like a backpack and whatever he could gather and then just took off. Dude, the inside of the house looked like it was like Ransacked. a movie scene. There, you couldn't even see the floor. the floor. There was so much stuff, like old oh, clothes, man. stolen shoes. mail. Like he was stealing mail. Stolen mail. There was like he he like was a tagger. So there was all sorts of spray cans. Stuff was sprayed. Stuff was broken. You Wanna know hear what I the mean? The funniest part though. Whatever. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we got there and there's people there. Like it's a guy and a girl. Okay. I'm like, who are you guys? Never seen these people. Never. Before. And. Yeah. Uh, he goes, oh, so and so is renting a room out to us for nine hundred dollars a month, oh, but wasn't oh paying us one dollar. And yeah. so, so he was screwing. You. He was oh, really, really taking it. He advantage. was. So he these was are the kind of people it. we we just obviously don't want renting our. And spots. so he was yeah. like, yeah, so and so just gave us notice like for like two days ago that we had to be out. They were still packing when we got there. And they didn't realize this guy just bounced. I mean, yeah, this guy yeah. just bounced, left him hanging. They had a dog in the house. Like, Dude, it was disgusting. So, and I have, I have video, you know, I could send you, or I don't know if you yeah. want to put it or something, you know. <laughs> but dude, I'm telling you, it was, it was bad. So that was the moment I think that I'm like, hey, this is a, like, we need to come check on our homes. I think even before we uh, evicted him, we had Whittier PD meet us at the house. Uh, cause I wanted to check on our carbon and smoke detectors. Uh -huh. Um, and so we had them, remember when yeah. your PD met us there? Cause we didn't know like, you know, what kind of state of mind he was in. Um, but just oh, for so us a protection. you're thinking he was nuts basically bringing the cops cause you think he's Oh yeah. I was basically. like, if something goes down, like I want you with the gun behind me cause yeah. I don't know, what am I going to do with my muscles? <laughs> <laughs> 
Wow, yeah, that's a that's a crazy story. Yeah, we yeah. ended up fi- uh, filling up a 40-yard container, right? Like multiple a of them. A 40-yard, like, you know, those huge ones, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. that are whatever, 8, 10, the, feet, probably the, 8 feet. The trucks, right? Yeah, the huge, yeah, yeah, yeah. huge ones. We ended up filling it up, and I ended up How just big was this get... place? was two-bedroom, and you filled it up, so he had it oh, slant. Dude. It's like a hoarder? What is this guy? It was, it was yeah. really bad. Yeah, and I think part of it was just him going, like, ransacking through everything and trying to get what he could get, you know, and, and just, just to leave. So, dude, like I said, you legitimately could not see the floor based yeah. off of how much stuff there there yeah. was. One time this lady yeah. tried to sue us, remember? I thought yeah, that was a story you can yeah. tell. Oh. <laughs> so, no, that's another That's one. part of California. Though, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. people, people sue for anything. And obviously, we were, you know, yeah. nothing happened. We knew nothing was going to happen. You know? But it was yeah. funny. We got a letter in the mail. We're like, how is she suing us? Or how is she trying to sue us? We're like, what the heck? You yeah. Know? Just a threat, basically, of... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we ended up going to court, you know. And once again, that's that's part of our forte, if you will. And what I really do take pride on is, you know, even if we we have those hurdles, is I go into something oh, figuring yeah. it out, you know. And I think, you know, and we were talking about it on the way over here, just kind of randomly, is a lot of people waiting for the right time to do something, whether it's buy real estate, whether it's start yeah. a business, whatever. They wait for the right time. Yeah. And we we're talking about it. That's where dreams go to die. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like, hey, is you waiting time. for something to happen? You waiting for, you know, a, a, a raise, your lucky date, whatever it is, just go for it. Just do it. Yeah. You know, and you're going to figure it out along the way. And not only that, there's more than enough people that are willing to help, you know. And I think for us, <laughs> that's something that I learned, you know, that I wish I would have learned maybe a little bit sooner. Um, when we started all of this, it's, hey, we're doing it by ourselves, you know. And part of it was... I don't need anyone's help. I could do it on my own. Part of it was, hey, it's my money. I don't want to bring in anyone else's money and maybe, you know, not perform in terms of payout. Yeah. And, you know, so, but I think that if I would have connected myself with the right people earlier on, I think it would have made a difference. That is a little nerve wracking, though, taking somebody else's money, though. That's because then you do owe them the money yeah, back. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mean more in terms of like, networking and connection with other people you know i think that would have been huge and i think that would have you know that yeah. been how's that beneficial. property now how's that what are your house that got destroyed it's our money that's really good baby. that's your really money good. maker now oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, back up to it's market one that's performing so. really well yeah so everything's at market rent besides the studio in the back but that one's not renovated so we're like let's just leave it yeah. in place i'm still increasing rent so because it's still really below what it should be renting out but he knows that and i told him yeah. Like, yeah. hey, you know, like you, I have that communication with him. But no, that one's really well. We bought it for a 640. Oh, we're worth like 1.2 per- right now. Holy hell, 640 yeah, for a triplex? Yeah, yeah. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty good. And, and that's, pretty so good. I'll touch on a couple of things because that's super important is... Yeah, I mean, we owe, I want to say, we you know, four, you got 400 a, on it. You've got it's, a COVID rate. you got one of those two point somethings or three point something. No, you know, that was did. at a 5.5, right? I thought we did. did we, I think we did refi during COVID. Yeah, but it's still yeah, not super yeah, low. Yeah. I think it's 5% is but the But it's lowest. not like 2%, 3%, yeah. no, nothing like yeah. that. Yeah, so we owe like 400 on it. Like she said, it's worth 1.2, 1.3 at least, you know, because everything's fixed up, at least for the two front units. And yeah. the rents are um, good. And the rents are, are really good. So that thing's cash flowing like a good thing. But that's another huge point that I want to hit on is sometimes people think, hey, I need 50 doors. I need 100 doors. I need whatever because they see that on TV or they, they hear it on podcasts. Dude, you, you just need a couple of really well-performing properties to set you up and to make you seven figures. You know what I mean? And, and it's, you basically just have to, you have to be a sniper, if you will, and fi- like just yeah. be able to find those, those deals. You're talking about selling make- the properties though, not cash flow. Well, I would say for well, both, you know, I mean, once again, we talked about cash flow here in California. That's, that's going to be hard, but yeah, I mean, you, you essentially need a couple of good properties to, to put you in a good place. You know, yeah. So you know, I, I don't think the goal should be, hey, I want five doors per year. I want two doors per year. What? That doesn't matter. You know, it's hey, pick a property that's going to perform really, really well, and that's going to be able to set you up. And I think if you focus on that and more of the process as opposed mm-hmm. to the doors, that's going to open you up to, hey, now I know the process. Now I know the systems. Now I know how to get there. And buying the next ones are going to be cake. You yeah, know what I mean? Because you've already do, you, yeah. Exactly. You've already done it. You already have the first one under your belt. Mm-hmm. And I would say that one's the hardest. You know, get the first one under your belt and then go from there. 
Yeah. I yeah. would say, though, when we bought that house, we were actually in a negative couple hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So we were paying out of pocket. Just it was to, under market rents. Yeah. Just to keep it afloat. But we saw the vision. So six years later, yes, now we're cash flowing six years later. Was it like That's that? That's a long time, yeah. Was it like yeah, that yeah. initially? No. But we knew, like, okay, once we update this two-bedroom, one-bathroom, now I can raise rents from 14 to 27 mm-hmm. or 29. Same thing with the middle unit. Her rent was like nineteen hundred dollars. So we had her leave, we renovated it, and now rents at like twenty nine. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. more like okay, now I have the house. I know I'm not cash flowing right now. I'm gonna have appreciation later on, and then cash flow is gonna come. Yeah. Once I renovate and increase rents, and then once you start increasing rents from there, yeah. then you increase more, your more cash flow. More and you more could cash actually flow. even take obviously you could take money out of that house now. Yeah. If you choose oh, to. For, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of equity in it. Yeah, and then I think part of it too is knowing the area and then properly fixing the house up and then what i mean by that is well specific to that area while keeping it nice if you Mm -hmm. will you know what i mean Uh, like because all of our like i said all of our projects are they they look nice you know so then if someone sees it and they're like all right well i'm gonna pay you know more top dollar yeah i'm gonna pay more than the average rent because this house is one turnkey and the design is awesome, you know, right. like I'd be more than happy to have, you know, family, friends, you know, versus them checking out one that's however, you know, three, four hundred dollars less, but, you know, maybe is not as nice or, yep. or is not as upgraded. No, no, totally. Um, well, anyway, I wanted to go into quickly another subject and actually this will be like kind of our last topic and it's a it's a, it's a good topic and something you guys talked about, which is um, essentially it's your charity work. And I know you guys are involved in some charity work. Um, could you tell me a little bit about Baja Bound and how you guys are involved in that charity, kind of what it's about and, and how you guys give back? Huh. Right. So I come, my dad was born in Mexico, um, Guadalajara, Jalisco. Sorry, I don't speak Spanish, so it's like, it's weird for me. To come <laughs> Guadalajara. <laughs> Guadalajara. <laughs> so he was raised like very, like under the poverty line, like everything, right? Okay. And so thankfully he turned his life around and I was able to grow up in a middle class area middle class life um Mm -hmm. but i knew that like when he was little like he had hardships so like my grandma had to cross through like the mountains and rivers my dad was like two years old coming over Mm -hmm. um so he's he got a citizenship later in life but i knew like okay that's where i was a baby he he was two when he came over and then (laughs) he got his citizenship i think maybe like his early 30s Um, so it was like, okay, like that's my story too. Like that's my background. That's where I come from. Mm -hmm. Not me crying. Don't cry. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Are you good? (laughs) Oh my God. I'm such a baby. (laughs) Are you good? Let it out. Let it out. (laughs) So when I go there to Mexico, I feel... I don't want to talk about it anymore. Oh, my God. Well, let's, talk, well, let's talk. Uh, well, forget it. So weird. I don't want to get too far into the story. Then. I'm like, what's, okay. what's Baja Bound? Yeah. So it's basically a uh, nonprofit that builds houses in Mexico. And kind of piggybacking off of what yeah. you know, she was saying. Uh, that's, where, that's where we come in. <laughs> we finish each other's sentences. Um, so I'm such a crybaby if you don't. Uh, so basically piggybacking off of that is, um, so yes, yeah, so it's a nonprofit and it builds houses for people that are, you know, less fortunate. So it's actually crazy, man. Like you go down there and you see how people, you know, are live. living. I mean, we live here in Southern California, you know, thank you very much. We live here in Southern California <laughs> and we, we, I mean, really in the U S is you kind of live in a bubble, you know what I mean? Like you don't, you don't necessarily see how other people are living. So yeah. we ended up doing our first one, you know, years ago where, like I said, you go down, you, you build physically houses. went to Mexico. Yeah. Oh, oh, we go, yeah. we go down there. I actually yeah. love it there. I mean, my yeah. wife has, she did the same. She's watching this right now. So she been down to Mexico and did it. I think she did it in Tijuana. Oh, I'm sure awesome. she's going to correct me if I got the <laughs> wrong city. But but so what, what city were you guys in? Ensenada. Yeah, so we go oh, to Ensenada. Close by, and yeah. it's something that, you know, they partner up with a local church, you know, and all that stuff. So there's a lot, obviously, that goes on in the background. Uh, but we'll essentially go and then we'll help out for, you know, three days um, and basically build a house from the ground up. You know, a lot of it is, once again, there's pre-cut wood, all that stuff, you know. Uh, but you, you build it, you know, you you sand it you put you know you do the roof you do everything you know and, and it goes to a deserving family so it's it's huge you know for us it's helped keep us grounded you yeah know, in terms of you know really how fortunate we are you know it's it's crazy because you know day to day here you know you're you're like at Starbucks and you're like, dude, I had to wait for five minutes. That was crazy. Oh, so you know what I mean? Here. Yeah, yeah. So then you, Chill, you know, bro. <laughs> exactly. So then you go over there and you're like, man, like there's just 
there's other people that, that don't have that opportunity. Uh, yeah. It's all relative, right? It's, it's it, for them. And it's crazy because you go over there and they're like, man, I'm so blessed. I'm so fortunate, you know, and you look, you're looking at them and you're like, man, like, dude, that's, that's one way of looking at it. You and know? they're so happy. Like they have nothing. Like they're living on dirt floors with like tents surrounding them. They use like an out, like a man-made outhouse for a restroom. Right. And they're so happy. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing to watch. And I'm like, yeah. wow, like we we go there to give, but we actually come back with so much more. Yeah. 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 They're just yeah. fulfillment. And you guys are giving basically your time or were you guys giving back I, I think you told me you're giving back some of your real estate. Yeah, so so yeah. for that we uh, basically give the time, if you will. So yeah. there's we you know, a fee we associated. Give monetary yeah, too. so there's a fee or monetary contribution initially and then you go with your time. Uh, but then actually you know what makes home dream you know unique in terms of the real estate space is that with every transaction that we do there's a portion that goes back to uh, a charity of our clients choice so whether we're selling whether we're buying you know whatever whatever it is is we will call up you know our, our client and say hey you know this is yeah. kind of the special moment if you will um what charity do you want to um give funds to and then they'll they'll let us know so yeah. there's been multiple ones it's actually really cool because some of them will kind of hit home, you know, if there's certain things that their family has dealt with in terms of, you know, whatever, uh, Alzheimer's, cancer, whatever it is, yeah. is they will usually donate to something like that. So it kind of hits home for them. And then for us, it's yeah. awesome because they know, hey, we're, we're about it and we really are about giving back. That's super nice. Know? I don't. I might have seen it before, but I don't personally know any other people in the real estate business that are giving back in terms yeah. of, in terms of especially their commission because agents' commission is sacred. Yeah, they don't yeah. Share that with nobody. The thing yeah. is, so. and that's a like where I'm so passionate about like giving back and like why yeah. I started crying because I'm like we there's so many other people out there like we're so fortunate. Yeah. We just made thousands of dollars. You can't give. Like, to, yeah, like, you, you can't yeah. do that, and like I feel like the more money that you give, the more that you're gonna get. Yeah. So it's like, why not just like have that cycle going, you know? Yeah. I was actually listening to a podcast and they were saying like, everyone wants financial freedom. They want to just be financially free. They want $10,000 in cash flow every, or every month, this and that. But don't you want to have like impact freedom when you're like, hey, I'm so good that like I can give to people yeah. that actually need. Yeah. And that's what Home Dream is. And that's, we're going to just like awesome. grow on top of that. That's grow awesome. Yeah. Well, not only that, but I think you hit, you know, a, a point where you don't I, like we don't play for money i don't play you know what i mean like i play for time i play for impact i play for teaching my kids that it's possible and that they could achieve yeah. anything that they set their mind to that's what i play for you know what i mean it's like early on yeah you're like oh dude i want to hit uh, you know net worth of a mill or and this, this or that this you know person. but then yeah but it, it's it's not that that then makes you it's the process and yeah. once you reach that you're like okay well we hit a net worth of whatever that it, that didn't do anything for us you know yeah, like money who cares really, yeah no. yeah you know who cares like let's actually keep going and let's give back let's yeah. make an impact and that's that's what it is for us make yeah. an impact leave a legacy make sure people know kind of what you're about and you're not yeah. just yeah. these yeah money hungry agents no basically. from an early age yeah. my dad always told me like no one's gonna remember what car you drove what purse you have all that stuff is gonna be gone and all that stuff's going to be in your, you're going to forget about the type of purses that you have in your closet. Right. But it's more like, who did you give to and what was the time like with your family? Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. that is what is. Memories. Too. Memories. Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. We're not here for a long time. <laughs> yeah. We're not actually. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, I like that subject, but yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. We're not here for a long time and we need to cherish every moment and give back. And cause that's what people are going to remember. You're going to go back to the house and you're going to see that family and you know, it does bring back those good memories and that's kind of what you guys did. So anyway, that was, that was a great Sorry story. Sorry for crying earlier, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you see when you have a woman on the, on the yeah. scene, it's like, the yeah, that's good. That's good. Emotion. It brings some emotion. Yeah, yeah, we haven't had that kind of emotion. So anyway, that's good. first of all, I appreciate you sharing that, that story. And of course, I, you know, obviously appreciate you guys giving back to the community. And like I said, um, yeah, my wife was kind of doing the same thing. Um, I, you're inspiring me. I need to get into it. I know that one of the girls here in my office, she keeps pushing me to do all these charities and stuff like that. And I need to phys I'm like, okay, I'll donate. But she wants me to like physically go out and do something. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I think this was a changing moment for me. I need, <laughs> it's a I need, sign. Yeah, yeah, it's a sign. I need to go out and I need to physically spend my time kind of helping other people out because I am blessed um, and I have a lot of the things that I want in life, I've 
you know, I thank God that I've been able to yeah. do those right. things. And they so, always say, like, don't be selfish. Like, God gave every one of us different gifts. Yeah. So don't be selfish with that. Like, you need to go out there and, like, actually use them for good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, totally. and that even goes back to, like, telling, you know, your personal story or kind of what you've gone through, you know, because I know, especially for me, that was one of the things where I was like, oh, I don't really don't want to talk about, you know, either mm -hmm. my past, you know, or I want to talk about, you know, other things. And, yeah. and dude, you just never know who you're impacting, you know, you never know you know who who is going to see maybe a video that you put out or you right. know or, or a donation whatever it is and be like dude that i could be me you know i could be making an impact so yeah that's yeah. that's huge well anyway guys um i guess i'll kind of just wrap it up here um <laughs> i just thank you guys for coming on My thank pleasure. you for that all that like legacy you guys are leaving and you guys keep doing what you're doing that that social media stuff is great and yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of seeing where you guys go from here in that team. I hope Thank that you. team I hope that team grows to to new heights and you do more flips and um, yeah. let me know about your next flip. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be <laughs> maybe I'll be another investor. Yeah, 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 no, for sure. So anyway guys, thank you. Uh, episode thank number you 10. Guys. Yeah.